Joe Biden, the U.S. president, is expected to make a statement tonight in the wake of the military strikes against Houthi targets in Yemen. The strikes are expected shortly with a series of carefully choreographed statements of the U.S., U.K., and other international allies to follow. That came right after Britain is expected to join in the U.S. in carrying airstrikes on Houthi military positions in Yemen tonight. America and, and Western forces are taking a stronger action, once again, against the trade routes that uh, the, the uh, Houthi military has been able to stop instead of, of course, uh, doing anything about the ongoing atrocities crimes against humanity in Gaza because that's their ally. That's how it works. If you're looking for honesty, if you're looking for integrity, if you're looking for moral clarity in the situation, you will not find it. America operates on the boundaries of self-interest. That's it. It's that simple. Do not ever allow any of these liberal losers to come in here and try to muddy the waters and to talk about how progressive America is. If you have a situation where... On the one hand, you have genocide. On the other hand, you have those who want to stop the genocide and are implementing a blockade at the behest of stopping that genocide. America is attacking the side that's trying to stop the genocide. It's done. It's very obvious to me what is going on here, okay? General Marks, what do you see in this uh, video that we have uh, taken from the ground in the distance looking at... It's hard to say, right? It's multiple plumes of fire. Looks like multiple explosions lighting up the sky. But what do right. you see when you watch this? Those are that looks like these are secondary explosions. That's significant. Frankly, if there aren't any Houthi fighters co-located with where those ammunition depots might be or some of their capabilities might be located, I'm okay with that. Let's get rid of all of their inventory. I'm sorry, but like that's a whole different country, man. Like, is it okay if if people start blowing up, like, random parts of America because there's ammo depots there? Like, what are we talking about? You can't do that. You are the United States of America. You're, like, seven, 8,000 miles away from this area, and you've decided, like, I'm going to blow up your weapons depot. Like, this makes no sense. Just did it, Bubba. I know. I know it makes a lot of people's dicks hard to think, like, oh, they're doing this, and we're showing our might towards a population of people that we had had uh, uh, been doing gen we would be we had been genociding basically and not directly genociding indirectly genociding with a regional proxy like we outsourced our genocide of the of the Yemeni population to Saudi Arabia okay like it blows my mind that like Americans champion this kind of thing you get no benefits from this dog you're not even they're not even doing this for your security it, they're doing this to flex for Israel basically. So it's additionally odd when Americans are like, lol, they're going to find out why we don't have health care. And it's like, bro, you really think that's chill? You just said it's cool that you don't have health care because America gets the aid and abet in genocide. Like, you think that's fun? You think that's a good thing? You just basically posted your L publicly. You are no different than like the dumbass hogs that we make fun of every day. Red Sea Blockade Operation Prosperity. Go oh, yeah, th they, are, they already call it cleverly Prosperity Guardian. Operation Prosperity Guardian. You know, they are defending prosperity done through commerce. Israel's brutal war on Gaza followed by tension in the region, particularly in the Red Sea, has created a security dilemma for the U.S. On one hand, U.S. wants to avoid the expansion of the conflict into a regional war. On the other hand, Houthis, Ansar Allah, attacks on Israeli-linked ships pose a threat to a greater threat to the U.S.'s role as a global and regional maritime security guarantor. U.S. initially announced the expansion of CTF-152-153, but when the Pentagon announced Operation Prosperity Guardian, it only had 10 members, missing the most critical and relevant, including KSA, Egypt, Oman, and UAE. Later, reports citing Pentagon officials came up that 20 countries have signed up for for the OPG, but they don't want their names to be published. This was a self-destructive exercise even before the operationalization of the force. OPG aimed to send a strong message showcasing U.S. dominance and leadership as a maritime security guarantor, but failed at the very step when it signaled a lack of confidence in U.S.-led venture by regional players. This hasty announcement by U.S. officials shows their lack of coordination with its allies, but also a lack of of a comprehensive strategy about what exactly the U.S. wants to achieve with this operation. I like that they were like, step aside, Saudi Arabia, we got this. We'll pick up where you left off. To the Houthis, a, a similar goal and a similar attitude remains. These guys have nothing. They just came out of a, 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 a blockade and a genocide. Now they have sidestepped Saudi Arabia, America's guys, and are directly fighting with America itself. BNO News says the USA and the UK have started carrying out airstrikes against Houthi targets in Yemen, according to Voice of America. <sighs> Event sources heavy aircraft overflights in airspace in the city of Hodeida. 
Yeah. In the wake of all of this, let it be known that America cares more about commerce st- being stopped than actual human lives being ended by Israel. And the rest of the world sees it. They see it. And to every single person that says, like, f- around and find out, by the way, you're gross, 100%. If you legitimately think that Israel's actions are are unacceptable, if you claim that you think that, uh, you know, boycott, div- boycott divestments and sanctions on the state of Israel is morally just and righteous, then you can't be criticizing the one group of dudes who, at least with the limited resources they have, tried to implement it. When it comes to the operations of Ansar Allah, they are pursuing their interests despite a possible coordination with the strategic level with Iran. The ceasefire and high-level engagement of other parties and regional powers with Ansar Allah with respect to Yemen is viewed by Ansar Allah as the de facto recognition of their role as permanent players in Yemen. Post-ceasefire, Houthis are seeking a recognition at a much bigger level by linking the siege in the Red Sea for Israel-linked vessels with the siege on Gaza by Israel. Ansar Allah have provided it a political, political cove. This is one of the reasons why regional countries, especially the Muslim-majority countries, are reluctant to be a part of any such operation, which in any ways is connected with Israel. This U.S.-led coalition is dominated by extra-regional players because the Saudis, the UAE, like all of the other regional actors that are a part of the pro-Israel, pro-America, anti-Gaza coalition know how popular these actions are in the region. This is something that I've stressed quite a bit this is why i said like iran doesn't need any extra permission to be able to like directly wage war with israel at this point that's important to understand because getting uh, so much popular support from the actual populations of the region spell trouble domestically for all of these individual countries why does the u.s go so far for israel they're a huge liability at this point because it's our it's our military base what do you mean weird takes from an american I'm sorry, what's the weird, awful takes as usual uh, brainwashed. I love looking at a situation like this and being like, you know what this spells to me? America's definitely not bad. America's good, actually. If it wasn't America doing all this, if it was Russia, for example, or a foreign adversary, China, you would be losing your mind. You'd be like, we have to nuke Beijing right now. That is what you would be saying. But when America's doing it, it's like, no, actually, you don't get it, dog. This is, you know, I'm doing profound foreign policy analysis here okay let me tell you i somehow always magically find the the exact triangulated position that uh, america is good actually they're trying their best you see two of some of the worst genocidal superpowers historically come together and like start bombing yemen a country that they were you know dishing out their regional actors to do a genocide in shortly after that genocide is is uh, ended that blockade is ended and you're like I think the guys that were doing the genocide are the, the good guys here, I think. Yeah. Genuine question. Why does everyone complain about the supposed America is bad takes you have? Isn't there enough proof to show that they are bad? Yes, because they, you know what the reason why people get very mad at that? Because liberals fancy themselves to be like intellectually superior to the dumb hogs that they want to desperately not identify with. But when it comes to foreign policy, if you are pro-American global dominance, you are identical to a hog. That's it. The difference between... A hog and a liberal is that on its foundations, they still come from the same place, American exceptionalism, and America has to be the world police. Just the hog says more slurs while conducting itself and making an argument. The liberal, on the other hand, that is not a hog, a Democratic Party voter, still has the same interests, still wants the same things to happen, but they don't say as many slurs. They think it's like kind of mean and and rude to to, you know, Uh, champion genocide while simultaneously also uh, saying that you're championing genocide it's a it's a kinder gayer imperialism the u.s and the uk are now bombing 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 yemen so the precious israeli occupation regime can continue his genocide of gaza and the western media and political class are cheering it on and celebrating the same ones who demanded every nation on earth do everything for ukraine i guess the analog is basically like what would you what would we do in the situation you know what i mean like america already did this against russia to a certain degree what Yemen is doing. But if like Estonia tried to do this to Russia, right? As Russia was like blowing up Ukraine, everyone was celebrated. Everyone be like, oh, thank God there's someone out there that's like doing the righteous thing. Do a poll of Americans tonight. Ask them if they know who the Houthis are, where they live, why we are bombing them, and whether the president has the authority under the constitution to bomb them. Go. Yeah. (laughs) 30% of GOP voters support bombing Agraba, the city from Aladdin. America has a ton of blockades on countries that aren't at war. It's not at war with. Yeah. The statement from Biden on the airstrikes in Yemen, Gaza, of course, not mentioned once. Statement from President Joe Biden on coalition strikes in Houthi-controlled areas in Yemen. 
Today, at my direction, U.S. military, together with the United Kingdom, and with support from Australia, Bahrain, Canada, and the Netherlands, successfully conduct their strikes against a number of targets in Yemen used by Houthi rebels to endanger freedom na of navigation in one of the world's most vital waterways. The strikes are in direct response to unprecedented Houthi attacks against international maritime vessels, vessels in the Red Sea, including the use of anti-ship ballistic missiles for the first time in history. These attacks have endangered U.S. personnel, civilian mar mariners, and our partners, jeopardized trade, and threatened freedom of navigation. So why are the Houthis doing this? Is a question I would love to ask. Like, why are they implementing a blockade? Why has America killed more than they have? You can't just meme away from the Houthis have done. They've been trying to topple the Yemeni government for 30 years, of which uh, had normal relations in the Middle East. Why aren't we talking about Iran sponsoring Shia militant groups all over the Middle East to rise up against Sunni governments, which are much more in favor of normalization with Western powers in Israel? Not that Sunnis are innocent in killing Shiites, but this is a 1,000-year conflict that's not going to change. I'm done. I can't do this. What do you mean, dude? Normalizing with Western powers and, and Israel. What are we talking about? Hello? Are you familiar with Western powers in Israel and what they're doing? You have America's boot shoved so far up your ass that it's coming out of your mouth when you have this conversation. You just immediately take it for granted. Like, your standard of modernity is how well they get along with two imperial powers in the region, two destabilizing forces in the region that have killed more than anyone else. That is unimaginable. I know it's taken me 11 days to yell at a chatter, but God damn. Damn, what a f idiotic approach to the subject, dude. That's insane. That's your standard? Wow, I can't believe how good Saudi Arabia is in the region because of how aligned they are with Western powers in Israel, even though they're doing a genocide in Yemen or they conducted it. If this is your standard of who's a good operative in the region, then yeah, you are morally righteous. Except this is an incredibly idiotic way to assess the situation. How else is there going to be stability? Brother, please, I beg of you, just take a deep breath and really think about your output here. You are a f***ing neocon. You might fancy yourself to be a liberal, to be an intellectual, to be above that, but you are no different than a Christian fascist neocon with this way of thinking. Whoever doesn't align with the Western world deserves to get killed and deserves to get slaughtered. That's crazy. Want to be morally correct, question mark? Acknowledge the fact that they're all bad, and this whole my team, their team debate is garbage. There's nothing right happening in the Middle East, and the only people suffering are the actual civilians that live day-to-day -day in poverty. Thank you for your big brain take, dude. No, there are morally correct positions to take. Two things that I always have to relitigate with an overwhelmingly American, overwhelmingly Western, Western chat, which will never see the subjects as real humans. You only care about the civilians of the Middle East, the Muslims, whether they be Shia or Sunni, it doesn't matter. You only care about them when you can use them as a talking point against whatever foreign adversary of the United States of America or Israel, because it's an extension of United States of America's foreign policy interests. Don't come to me with this bullshit. You are no different than the Republican that says, what about our homeless veterans when talking about how immigration must stop? That's it. Two principles. Let me explain to you. Two principles that you should keep with you, coming from a person who's Turkish, okay? When you look at a situation in the Middle East, you look at what the local government is and who the Western forces are. Never align with the Western forces. An example I tell you all the time is the Turkish coup d'etat. A coup occurred in Turkey. The American-backed forces in that situation was the terrorist cell of Fethullah Gülen. He still lives in the Poconos, by the way. The Muslim cleric Fethullah Gülen had aligned with the CIA. Him and Recep Tayyip Erdogan grew up together, basically. His Islamist faction had basically overtaken the police, the court system, schools, and every facet of government. They slaughtered a ton of Turkish people in that coup d'etat. I can't even go back to Turkey because of all of my criticisms of Erdogan. And yet, I much prefer Recep Tayyip Erdogan to the American puppet. That's how it works. That's it. This doesn't mean I love Recep Tayyip Erdogan. This simply means that he is better than Fethullah Gülen. That's it. You, on the other hand, living in Langley, make this assessment from your perspective. So as someone who lived there, I can tell you what is what. So when I look at other countries... I look at the regional actor, whoever the regional power player is, and then I look at who is backed by the Western superpowers. And let me tell you, in almost every single case, the overwhelming majority cares about 
making sure that they can deal with their own problems internally, domestically, not the Western back powers. That's a principle that you could take home with you. If you want to actually be moral or if you want to be smart about the way you analyze other countries, that's one basic principle that you can take home with you. All of a sudden, magically, you are above on your foreign policy analysis. You're going to be better off than 90% of people that look at the situation. I hate <clears throat> when people come in here and try to talk about implementing stability by, by the metrics of who aligns with America's interests better. And we're having this conversation at the eve of like America and England bombing Yemen. Also, the sectarian point falls apart when you know Hamas ain't Shia. Exactly. That's so funny that people are like, oh, dude, the sectarian conflict has been ongoing for a thousand years. And it's like, really? That's so crazy because both the Houthis and also Iran are currently backing the only, the, the Sunni movement that the rest of the Sunni leadership do not have the balls to take a stand against oh my god listen the houthis may use child soldiers to force women to be brides but they aren't against the western hegemony brother why do you think this is a good talking point we in afghanistan directly align with boy fuckers and allowed it to continue in afghanistan do you care about boy fucking and putting an end to boy fucking no you don't shut the fuck up you don't you don't my point is always, it doesn't matter if they're good or bad on the same boundaries that you are trying to apply to them. My point is, let the people of Yemen deal with it. But you don't want to do that. You want America to deal with it. The idea that, like, you would, you have the gall, the audacity to be like, the women in Afghanistan, like, that is the only way that we can genuinely implement stability. How stable is Afghanistan? How stable was Afghanistan when America was the world police and it was there? How stable was Iraq when America was the world police and it was there? How stable has this region been? Has it been good? There is not a single instance where, oh my God, the people of Yemen are starving and can't. Yes, the people of Yemen are starving, not because of the Saudi blockade that was implemented that caused the worst famine in, in, uh, in, at the modern day and age. And it was actually the Houthis stealing the food themselves off of the people of Yemen. I know, you're right. Bro, this is literally identical to the Israeli arguments. They don't have to be good. My point is they don't have to be good. They're not good. You don't have to unconditionally support these people. You would never accept this lesser of two evils excuse if the topic were an American election. That's really cute that you say that, but I literally voted for Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton and will most likely vote for whoever is not Donald Trump. So shut the f*** up. No, I am an incrementalist, and I do end up voting for the lesser of two evil every time. You just are a f***. Baboon who has been primed into thinking that I'm some like dumb America bad guy who literally is some like tanky Maoist third worlders or whatever the f someone told you. And that's why you came in here and said that. Okay. I talk about local organizing. I work with local organizers regularly. I have community leaders in this community. What have you done? You're probably alt right three and a half months ago in the forums, doxing your favorite e-celebrity or whatever, and now you're in here portraying yourself as a liberal because you watched a guy do a debate one time and it changed your f***ing world. That's how little your convictions are. You have no convictions whatsoever. That's you, you, you lose sight of whatever you believe in like that. Yeah, no, dude, this guy, this guy is the real moral arbiter here. Con dudes who curse Jews and kidnap women brides with a lesser of two evils. This is actually deranged. Keck W, con dudes. You're doing the thing I told you. I do not give a shit about their politics okay i don't care i don't care what their slogans are i don't care about any of that there is one country currently conducting genocide and another country that is implementing a blockade america is not bombing yemen because their logo has cursed the jews on it america is bombing yemen because yemen is stopping commerce from flowing through the red sea and the commerce is stopping in the red sea specifically because Israel is conducting actions in Gaza that are akin to genocide. Stop saying my hate group is better than the other. What is your solution? Chatter, who has been in here since 2008, who I, I'm glad hasn't gotten a lobotomy yet, I guess. What is your solution to the situation? Because you're surely celebrating blowing up the in, uh, Yemeni's population. It seems like you like that. So you're championing that. Don't sit here and act like you have a better solution. You can just sit there and say, oh, it's my hate group is better than the other. 
You you have a hate group. Invade and destroy the Houthi Giga Chat. Yes, you're a pathetic, sniveling little coward who recognizes that his empire is crumbling and the only thing you can do is cope with the reality that America has done nothing for you, specifically with all of its imperial bounty, so you can think, oh yeah, we can roll over one of the poorest countries on the fucking planet. Good, congratulations. Congratulations, dumbass, you did it. You're still a pathetic loser who's not gonna be able to pay rent. Your boss is going to fuck one girlfriend that you maybe will ever be able to get, and you have no recourse whatsoever. For the rest of your life, you're gonna be a fucking pathetic little pleb who goes, that's awesome, we got it, baby. We're killing the Houthis out there. It's so stupid, brother. There's no way for you to ever recover from this. This is how desperate white supremacist Nazis are, you are behaving in the exact same way that the jawless, chinless Iowa Nazis behave. Oh, I know I can't, I can't get a job and I don't want to examine the material conditions. Everyone has told me that as a white man, I'm supposed to be so powerful and none of that happens. So what must be the real problem? Oh, that's right. I'm going to go dominate black people real quick. I'm going to go act like I am superior to them. I am descendant of the Nord Vikings, but you're not. You're a fucking loser. Just like that fucking Nazi is a loser. You are the exact same kind of loser. Instead of looking for some esoteric, mythical Nordic rune that you want to identify with, you have identified with being an American pig. Being a capitalist warmonger. You don't even have like any kind of mythology associated with it. It is just indiscriminate bombing campaigns done for ExxonMobil. Done for wealthy, powerful individuals that will consistently fuck you. They will fuck you over and over again. You have no identity, so you're grabbing on to what remains of America's industry, the military industrial complex, and all of its output. That is so sad. Fix your life, chatter. Jesus Christ, dude. It's wild, absolutely wild to be riding this hard for American corporations and American imperialism. It doesn't even come back to fucking help you, you idiot. We have no cohesive national identity even. We are literally a patchwork of different corporations. It's like a bunch of corporate towns put together. The only glue that holds Americans together is this like weird American identity of dominating other countries that are way poorer than we are. It's so sad. And every single time, every single time uh, we, we, you know, institute our might. We go overseas and we blow their fucking bases up and, you know, we blow their weapons supplies and we're like, yeah, those guys are the bad guys. You think we're doing something good, but like when we steal their natural resources at the end of the day, we you don't even get a crumb of that. Like what good is this entire imperial project if you can't even get healthcare? I love the notion of uh, uh being like, dog, I hate the Houthis because they have child brides. Which is why I want to fucking kill all the child brides with American bombs. Yeah, you know what fixes the child bride situation in Yemen? A tomahawk missile that taxpayers paid for instead of paying for your dumbass diabetes medication, you stupid fuck. Here's the difference, by the way. No matter where that chatter is ideologically, I still want him to get healthcare. I still want him to get a better education. I still want him to find meaning in his life. That's the difference. I don't believe that, like, just because someone is a dumbass American Nazi that they deserve to get killed, okay? I don't think they should be murdered. I think they should have a meaningful life and no longer have those opinions. The goal is always to try and fix the material, the underlying material conditions, so that it is way harder to just, like, become a Nazi out of nowhere. One other statement that's worth pointing out here, Austin says, a coalition of countries committed to upholding the rules-based international order demonstrated our shared commitment to defending U.S. and international vessels and commercial vessels exercising navigational rights and freedoms from illegal and unjustifiable attacks. The reason I point that out is because normally when you see the U.S. highlighting their action in support of the international rules-based order, <laughs> it is, for example... I love watching Consampi manufactured in real time, dude. Also it's awesome. Language in yeah, we're using statement. rule-based international order make no mistake it's our rules <laughs> rule-based international order means we make the rules and we give the orders so like for example you were like hey genocide is bad right let's say on Allah was like hey the genocide of palestinians is bad we are going to implement a blockade in the red sea we say no genocide is good we are going to do that and if you try to stop the genocide 
in your own little way, we're going to come and blow you up. It's Another not angle of the that bombings. Made a big issue out of in the in the past. Yes, they referenced it, but it's not been a big issue. Um, their, their ability to, to give unexpected reasons and rationale and do the unexpected. Remember, chatters. Every single thing I said about Palestine was 100% correct. Many people yelled at me at the time. They're like, Hassan, I can't believe you're saying this is genocide. I can't believe you're saying this is genocidal. We found out that that was the case. This is also unacceptable. I'm not saying it's genocidal, but I do think it's unacceptable. And it also is senselessly escalating. The correct way for those of you in the upcoming days that will ask, well, what would you have done? The correct way to deal with this is by stopping Israel's genocide in Gaza. Did you cover Ansar Allah's statement? America and Britain made a mistake in launching the war on Yemen because they did not benefit from their previous experiences. Had it not been for Bush's foolishness in pushing Ali Saleh to attack us in Saada in 2004, the Yemeni people would not have launched 2014 revolution that ended the rule of the American ambassador in Sana'a and expelled the Marines from it. Had it not been for the foolishness of America and Britain in pushing Saudi Arabia and the UAE to declare war on us in 2015, Yemen would not have been able to today carry out its religious, moral, and humanitarian duty in supporting Palestine. There is no doubt that America and Britain today regret their previous follies, and soon they will realize that direct aggression against Yemen was their greatest folly of their history. The thing is, like, they do talk a big game, but honestly, they, they follow through on it. I mean, they're crazy. I don't think there's a distraction from the ICJ chatters. They've been gearing up for this for a while. This is Yahya Sari, uh, spokesman of the Yemen's, uh, Yemen's armed forces. Here. If we look at the crimes being committed in Gaza, this is uh, from December 19th. They're similar to the ones that were committed against us in the past nine years. Bombarding hospitals, they bombarded our hospitals. Bombarding markets, they bombarded our markets. Bombarding schools, they bombarded our schools. Bombarding roads, people while they're soundly sleeping in their homes. Just like it happened to us. It's the same aggressor, the same American bombs being poured on Gaza, were the same ones being poured on us in Yemen. The aggressor is one. The aggressor is one. The leader of it is one. America. The one who led the aggression to Yemen is the same one who's leading it in Palestine. Majority were saying, strike Israel, we dare you. We strike them. They said, seize a ship, we dare you. We seized one and took it to our port in Hodeida. It greatly honors us that we mobilize against the enemy. That we are confronting the Zionist enemy who is aggressing on Palestine and our homeland. We will continue to confront the American-Israeli enemy until the aggression in Gaza stops. This is a very important part. We will confront the American-Israeli uh, enemy until the aggression on Gaza stops. <coughs> As for the battle in our homeland, we are, God willing, fully prepared and ready for anything from the enemy. If Saudi and Emiratis think, even think of leading an aggression on us, commanded by Israel and USA, we are present and ready. They've tried us for nine years. If they want to do it again, we're here and we're ready. As for America and Israel, if they attack our homeland, they will commit foolishness they've never committed before. The response will be fierce from the people and the armed forces. We are with our brothers in Palestine and Lebanon in facing Israel because they're our greatest enemy. We didn't say death to America with our heads turned. We are serious about it. A lot of Yemenis believe Houthis are not the best and are corrupt in their own sense, but still most can agree that they are not the greater enemy America and Saudi is. Thank you. That's simply my point. My point is always that many people you can always find someone who will dick ride america you're gonna find you're gonna find like kurdish people for example or even turkish people as well that will be like no america really good actually what are you talking about so much better so much better than the current situation you go to iran there are you know shah riders which is uh, pretty crazy most of the most of the iranians in diaspora are like that a lot of the iranians in diaspora are like that sorry but then you have the shah riders in iran still they write him super hard, and they say the most embarrassing stuff you've ever heard in your entire life. It's the classic, like, I am Iranian. You need to glass Iran, my friend. We want the monarchy back. Like, that's the, that's the type of energy that you get. But overall, most people understand, even if they absolutely despise their own current government, as I do for Turkey, they recognize that the American government's involvement is going to be far worse for the country's future. That's it. America's gravest mistake, which is not even a mistake, it's a deliberate attempt, but America's worst problem is that it has never allowed these countries to develop their own political movements without interference. That is an issue. So because of that issue, 
a lot of these nations have become infinitely more reactionary as a consequence of that Western involvement because everybody goes, no, don't touch that shit. What are you talking about? Now we can't even fight our own battles. I know this, once again, from Turkey. America's coup in Turkey literally gave Erdogan a lifeline and another 10, 15 years of mandate. It did. Erdogan changed, directly changed the constitution by referendum, meaning a majority vote gave Erdogan the power to change the Turkish constitution from a parliamentary system to a presidential one. In the aftermath of that coup, there was martial law instituted. This happens all the time. And Americans don't want to listen to someone who is actually from a country like this or don't want to listen to someone who even looks like them, sounds like them, loves America, lived in America for, you know, 10 years plus. They don't want to listen to anybody. They just want to listen to whoever is going to tell them everything America is doing is actually good and righteous. Ultimately, they're trying their very best. I don't think I can get this across. At a fundamental level, I do not believe that America is interested in the Middle East with honest and good intentions. That's it. I don't believe that. And I think there's enough historical there's enough historical precedent that backs this sentiment. I don't think it's good. America's involvement in the Middle East has always been bad. Almost every other country that's outside of the Middle East and its involvement in the Middle East has always been bad. Russia included, or if you want to consider Afghanistan to be a another part of it, I guess. I loop Afghanistan into the conflict in the MENA region as well, even though, you know, it's Asia. One of, the pro one of the things is, like, there's not a lot of actors in town. There's regional actors that you can go to. If you're not going to be with America, then uh, you're, you're going to work with someone who's against America. And the regional actors that are positioned against America, more often than not, are going to be, like, Iran or Russia or China. Does that make sense? You say Americans should not be happy with their government wasting their tax money bombing the Middle East. Why do you dismiss the Yemeni chowder that doesn't want their Houthi government wasting their money bombing ships on the strait? Beautiful question. Thank you very much. The Houthi government that you are talking about is utilizing resources that is getting from Iran for the most part, okay, on uh, Red Sea commercial traffic that is happening in its backyard. America is using our tax dollars to go f*** those guys up 8,000 miles away. And the reasoning for why they're doing it is a just reason. If America was implementing a blockade on Israel, I would be there for that. I would say that's a very good thing. Obviously, it's a laughable notion. It'll never happen. But if you can't make the distinction, if you can't comprehend the difference between someone doing the morally righteous act of trying to, with the very limited resources, in, in uh, trying to participate in the end to a genocide, and the other person actually contributing to said genocide. I don't know what else to tell you about that. There's a difference between good things and bad things. Remember when Biden said this? As president, I will use military power as a last resort. We will not go back to forever wars in the Middle East. Ah, that's sick. Saudi Foreign Ministry Statement on the Strikes of Yemen. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is closely monitoring with great concern the military operations in the Red Sea region and the airstrikes that have targeted several locations in the Republic of Yemen. The real big dick boys in the room are supposed to be the guys who ended the blockade. China. What will they do?